we continue on on act on summer so if you haven't been in a small group you need to get in one or sign up for one and you have one and invite a bunch of people to your house and kick them out after about an hour as i'll tell you what sometimes they just stay for quite a while and you know what i was going to kick everybody out of my house but i love them so much they stayed around for about two and a half hours and we talked about the things of god and snacked and everything so we had a good time. So Acts chapter 11 really is, is, a, is, a, is a large recap of what Mark Fincher and Pastor Bevel preached on probably in chapter 10. Uh, so I'll, I'll bring you up to date as we go. But let me say this, um, you know, about being in small groups or wherever you're at. You have to be in the community of Christ in order to grow so you don't end up getting stale, falling away, and something really bad happening to you because... Yeah, God's, here's, here's the deal. God's worried about your uh, character more than he is your comfort. And, and sometimes it takes a lot to get in uh, Christian community and these kind of things. But, hey, the effort's worth it, I think, in the end, when you walk away from your small groups or your Bible studies or church services or whatever it is. And maybe some of you guys say, I can't get to any of these things. Get on the phone with somebody and study the Bible. Just get on the phone and go, hey, man, I need to chop it up with you a little bit. Can you... Or, or get on Overcomer Hour. We, we do that on Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock. But just get in and, and, and get some of that, okay? It says, Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard the Gentiles also had received the word of God. Oh, my gosh, here's the deal. Those guys from the other side of the tracks also received the gospel. <laughs> and this is kind of the attitude, and, and I don't mean to make light of it, but I'm trying to set it up for you. And then I'll be visiting back to chapter 10 just a little bit. And uh, these guys were really concerned because they were still trying to live under the ways of the law, which are weighty and heavy and, and, and weren't able to, to fulfill it. Uh, but um, so the story goes on in 11.2. It says, so when Peter went up to Jerusalem, uh, the circumcised party criticized him. Oh, can you imagine that? A bunch of church people criticizing one another. Can't hardly believe it. Well, what? It's true. Anytime you do something, someone is going to criticize what you're doing. They're not going to like you doing church here. They're going to like you doing church at Branson. They're going to like you doing church at the farm. They're going to let you do church in the city or because we have a preconceived notion of how church ought to be. And thank you for the comments, but that's fine. So um, I'm just going to tell you a story anyways, even though you probably don't want to hear it, but it's a good story. Um, we was having cowboy church at my farm yesterday, and we was praying. And, um, and I, I knew there were some people that were going to come later, and, and, and Jerry and Cindy ended up coming. And, um, and I kind of turned around, and I seen them. And then they brought a friend with them, a young man named Jonathan. And... Uh, and he sat in at service, and after we got done, he, he started asking questions about Jesus. And, uh, and so I sat down in the barn with him, and I got to be honest with you, uh, Terry, I was busy. I, wanted, I was busy, and I, uh, I was wanting to, uh, I was, I'll be honest, I was wanting to saddle my horse and go rope right after that because it's, you know, cowboy church, rope, and then eat. And it's not always in that order. Sometimes we eat, then we preach, and I, however it works out. But I was extremely busy, or so I thought. So I thought, I'm going to sit down with them, and we're going to talk about this. He says, I, I've studied the Bible, and I understand the concept of, of Christianity and things like this. But I want to know how this would play out in my life. Can you describe it to me? So I want to make sure that you guys know. The, the moral of the story is that you guys never get too busy, that you don't have time for your friends to tell them how to get to this place called the New Jerusalem. Amen? We want to make sure they get there, and it's going to be because you have shown them that. So we're sitting down. He had asked me some questions, and we're sitting there with Jerry and Cindy, and they've, they've been working with this young man for some time. And I said, then you can see when the word of God is out on people and it's marinating and it's doing its work because it's a living and active word that's, that's bubbling up. And then once I knew he got the word and everything, and I, I didn't want to make the decision for him. I wanted to make sure he made the decision for himself. Because sometimes we can want things so much that we want to do it for the... Oh, come on, you got people that you want saved, don't you? Can't you save them real quick here before we leave? 
Just save them. Can't you just save them, Pastor? I can't save anybody. I can't even save my own self. But I know a guy who can save anyone at any time, and his name is Jesus. I mean any time. Woo, look out. Well, once I knew that the word was really kind of stuck on him, and I was kind of letting it, um, and you get that discernment as you continue to uh, work with the Lord, and then I walked away, and then I didn't get all the way around my tractor there, Lonnie, and he chased me down, and he's on crutches, didn't he, uh, Jerry? He chased me down. He said, I want to know how I can be saved. And then right there on my farm, right behind my John Deere tractor, I led that young man to the saving grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah, don't tell me God can't show up anytime, anywhere, even if you don't like it. And that, it's a good message. And then he followed us back to the rope pen back there and just was very inquisitive. And he said, man, you all, or he said, I'm from the city, you all little country out here, aren't you? I said, you got that right. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. He's the God of the city and the county and the country. And he ain't got no limits, amen? So maybe you take that with you. 11.3 says, he says, you went to the uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained to them. In order. So here he's going to explain to you what happened. And this is almost just like a carbon copy of chapter 10 for the most part. Or at least the first part of the message. He says, so he starts to describe and explain what happened. He says, verse 5, I was in the city of Joppa. So here he is. Peter's over in Joppa. And this, this man named Cornelius was over here in Caesarea. And he said, God spoke to me. I need you, you guys that work for him. Go get this guy Peter who's staying at Simon the Tanner's house. And bring him back. Watch this. And he's got a word for me and my family. And you said, well, isn't this Cornelius guy, watch this, Lonnie, isn't he the one, let's see, in 10-1, isn't he the guy that's a devout man? He fears God, he gives generously, and he prays? Yeah, that guy, Mike. You're telling me he's not saved? Well, according to the scripture, he's not saved. He wants to hear a word from the Lord so him and his family can give their life over to Jesus. So, well, I thought he had like four of the five things that he surely would be saved. Let's look at it again, class. He's a devout man. He fears God, and he gives generously to the people, and then he prays. You would think that in the natural, that would warrant that somehow this type of activity surely would give me salvation. And we would all be wrong if we were to assume that, Big Steve, that we can somehow miraculously work our way into heaven. Here we are. If we drum up enough activities and enough things, and all, all of a sudden God's going to look at us and say, hey, you're holy now. No, the only way you can be holy is through the blood of the Lamb. That's, it's something he's done. It's not anything that you've done. you got to get off your high horse a little bit thinking there's something that you got that got, <laughs> that you got that God needs. We're pretty high on ourselves sometimes. You're like, God, you see what I'm doing? He goes, yeah, I see what, I, what you're doing. I also see the heart behind it. Just say, oh, my, and I'll get off of it. He knows what the heart, he knows why you're doing what you're doing. He's doing it for your glory or his glory. That's what he wants to know. Well, moving on along the story. He said, I seen in a trance, he said, there was a great sheet that descended being led down from heaven and by its four corners and it came down looking at it closely I observed animals and beasts and prey and reptiles and birds of the air so these were all unclean things according to the law and they were still trying to uphold that sometimes people sometimes even when people are born again they still try to keep the activities uh, because they think it's going to help them somehow. Here's the deal. We do good works because we are saved, not do good works be to get saved. Amen? You do good works because you are saved because God's moved in your life. Well, let's check it out. Let's see what he says in verse 7. He says, And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, what God has made clean, do not call common. And then he says this happened two or three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. 
Then he says, we ended up, I'm going to fast forward to verse 14 because that's where I'm trying to get, and this is where the bulk of the message will come from. He says, then we ended up leaving, we ended up leaving Joppa, and then we ended up at Caesarea at this, uh, this Roman centurion's house, this devout guy and everything. You know the guy. They got the, they got the Christian everything, and they got the bumper sticker and the jewelry to prove it. Have you ever seen anybody out there? I, I don't know where you're watching from today. Uh, but here in St. Louis, we got a, a, a station, a Christian station that says 99.1. And that's a great station. But that, but that radio station, Carol, doesn't make you a Christian. You just say, ouch. But you assume because it's on their car that they must be born again. And you and I both know what happens, Jumping Jimmy, when we assume something about someone. We're usually... I'll get going. Some may assume that I'm not a pastor. I went in to do Aaron Winberry's mom's funeral at Bowie Funeral Home, a funeral home here in the area. And I walked in and I asked for the clergy record and this lady looked me up and down. <laughs> and I had a nice shirt on too. I said, I need the clergy record. She said, yeah, right. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Say she assumed. she assumed. She assumed I wasn't a pastor. You got to be careful about that. You need to be careful about who you judge, too. Oh, quit. You judge him. You got everybody pigeonholed. They got, he's here and he's here and he's here. Take that off. Who are you to figure out? what everybody is. You need to let God be the judge of that stuff. Say, I will. And then in that way, we can, uh, Mr. Cope, we can move the church forward when we're not worried about who, what everybody looks like all the time and get all, all worked up over that. He said, well, you ought to see him right there. I just can't, I can't worship like that. Well, maybe if you can't worship in that environment, maybe it's, it's not him and maybe it's you. I'll be doggone if I'm going to come to church and worry about if somebody is going to knock me off my square. I come for him. I come to get a dose of the ghost. I come to get a fresh word from the Lord. Hello? Well, here it is. So here it goes. So going in. He goes into his house in verse 14. Here's what he says, 14. Cue it up and highlight it. It says, he will declare to you a message by which you can be saved, you and all your household. Now, I just told you about this guy, uh, John. I just told you about him in, in chapter 10, verse 1. He gives money. He prays. He probably does all kinds of uh, wonderful things. But until he hears the message for himself and receives it for himself, he can't be saved. Because the only one that can save his soul is Jesus the Christ. So do we got that in your spirit so I can move along uh, from there? Verse 15, he says, As then I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And if you're keeping notes, you can check that out in Acts 1 and uh, Matthew chapter 3 as well. If then God, listen to this, if then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? And that might be something that you're struggling with right now that, that, that somebody might be getting in your way for you to draw closer and closer to Christ. That means that some person is in your life that probably ought to be removed out of your life. He is in the way of your walk with the Lord. It's not coincidence that I'm speaking on this today. And your, your walk has been stunned by, by some super religious nut job, if I can say that that is standing in your way of your relationship with Jesus. Telling you what you ought to do, what you ought to say, what you ought to wear, and how many times you ought to be at church and what you ought to do when you get there. So Peter says, who was I to stand in the way of the work of the Lord? 
Verse 18, it says, and when they heard these things, they fell silent. So that means they were quiet. And they glorified God. Now listen to what happens. And all of a sudden, they get on board after a while. Somebody asked me, uh, somebody asked me uh, one time about our church. He says, well, you know, we've heard a lot about it. He says, are you a hand-raising church? Do you guys, y'all raise your hands when you're praising the Lord? I said, we raise our hands. We raise our feet. We raise everything. And we just... And that's what's getting ready to happen right here. After a while, you've been here long enough, you just, the religion starts to slide off and you go, you know what? And even, even some of the, the strictest Baptist or whoever it is, you know, every once in a while you look out there and, and their, hand, their hand may not go past their head because that would be a violation of such and such code. Or the religions who can't dance, or you don't, you can't use electric instruments, or all these things. I'm going, what else is? They may not lift their foot off the floor, but you can bet one thing, it's starting to tap a little bit. <laughs> now I'm going to bring you to something, so stay with me as I as I do this. Verse 18, he says, when they heard these things, they fell silent. And they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God granted us repentance that leads to life. They finally realized that also the Gentiles, Pam, could be saved just like our Jewish friends. And then they consented to that, and they started to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to ask you to rise here right now with me. And I want you to keep your eyes closed as you rise. Listen to this. And I want you to think about this Holy Ghost nonsense. What's it all about? We've always had God, Lori, canned up and ride in this little box, and he only resides at our church. And he only comes out at certain times. It's, a, it's like we got him, it's like we got a, a genie in a bottle. And we rub him, we rub the bottle every time we need a little miracle or we, we talk to him whenever we're in a crisis and all these kind of things. Does anybody want to serve that kind of God or do you want to serve the, the God of the universe that knows no bounds, that loves all people, that his spirit has been here since day one and it was hovering over the waters before creation even came into existence? That's the kind of God I want to serve. Now, I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to ask the pastors and the deacons to move forward here, and I want to ask Carol to riff a little on the piano, but I want you to listen to this as I give this, give this last part of this message. And, and listen to how this comes together. Verse 21 says, And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believe turned to the Lord. Not turned away from the Lord, but turned towards the Lord. So here's the call. God today, with eyes closed, I would like to do a, a do-over. And I said this to my own wife. I said, did that hit anybody right now? Is this... And if it did, you just raise your hand and, and just keep your eyes closed, everybody. I'd like to do a do-over. And my wife goes, what do you mean when you say that? I said, just do anything over, Carl. What are you screwed it up last night? You can screw stuff up in a minute. Oh, you can get angry because I wanted to do something and God put something in my path and now I got to do that, God. Don't you know how inconvenient this is to being a Christian? Yeah. Doesn't God understand our busy schedules, Jerry? We got every, I got all kinds of things to do. I got to do that, and I got to do that, and I got to do that, and I got to do that. God's going, you know what? You're humoring me with your silliness. No, oh, we run around. God allows your schedule to be fulfilled and you be able to carry out those daunting tasks. You do stuff that people dream about. They said, I would love to be like they are at that church where they're worshiping freely a, a God of the universe and a God that heals and heals diseases and fixes children and, and grandchildren and moms and dads. So back to the do-over. 
yeah, I started out the morning or last night like X, Y, Z. And if this starts to move you, whether you're here or north location or online, oh, I know you're watching. Hundreds of thousands upon tens of thousands of people watch our broadcast all over the world yearly. You don't think they got the same issues you do? They blew it too. God, I'm ready for a do-over. And you know the cool thing about it is, it's all right if you need a do-over. All you're doing today is getting honest. So those on three that ain't even looking around because today they're growing up as a Christian. They don't even care who's watching anymore. They're tired of walking into church and playing church. They go, I'm going to raise my hand. And I, I want to do over. I want to do over. On one, two, three. Boom, hand up. Come on down. Come on down. I'm not going to ask you to air your business out. I just want to see if you want to get real with that. I think that's what God wants. He wants to see some authenticity. And I told the church last night this, Mike. I might as well tell them today. We had a comment on our church by a good friend of mine, Pastor Ron Tucker. And you guys probably seen the video. It's kind of going around now. I went and did a video with him the other day because we're going to have a prayer ride on Saturday. And here's what he said about you guys, Big Steve. He said, you're so authentic. Look at your, look at your neighbor and say, you're so authentic. And what does that mean? He said, you're the real deal. I don't know how to make up stuff. I don't, I don't know how to hide behind a religious facade. That's one thing that's kind of funny. Mark Gray always said to me, he said, man, I'm glad you don't know anything about church. And it's sometimes better when we are just led by the power of the Holy Ghost. You got to tell the devil to get out your way today. Has anybody got a date with the king today? You can tell when God's moving in a church. All the hate has been pushed away. And all you want is the same thing for everybody as what you got. And it's a, it's a fresh anointing, a, a dose of the ghost. Oh, he's a good God today, church. And you might be asking yourself this question today. Can God really fix my thing? I was talking to a friend today, this morning. And they came up to me. They said, you know, you was praying for our baby that was diagnosed with a situation. And we took this baby back to the doctor. They said, we can't detect. What was it, Karen? We can't detect anything that this baby's ever been sick. Oh, somebody ought to shout in this church. Somebody ought to talk back. How does God do it? You petition him. He loves all them babies. No matter how old they are. Can we get some people at this church to pray for one another right now? You come down here, Angie. I want, somebody, I want some of my guys to be praying with Lonnie right now. We're all praying together. I know you have already. Come on down. I want the warriors down here. Tell the devil to get out of the way. You got a warrior coming down the aisle now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on down, Karen. Woo, look out. John's going to stand in for Lacey. Is anybody feeling a move now? 
we're going to double down on it today. Oh, the devil hates it when this happens. He goes, oh, no, they're doing it. They're praying together. They're putting hands on the sick. He goes, it looks like the book of Acts. They've thrown all the religious pamphlets and paraphernalia out the door, and they're, they're letting the power of the Holy Ghost run the church now. Oh, God, people are going to get saved. You can hear him here right now. He's, he's shaking the souls of the saints, and he's healing the sick. Just nod your head if you can even feel him. You ain't even got to say anything right now. Say, his, this is real. This is authenticity at its finest. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus today. I got friends and family members that, that need to be healed. And old devil, you got to get out the way. Lord, would you send the healing power of your Holy Ghost on these peoples. Here and at north and across the land. You person that's on your sick bed in the hospital that's watching this show today. We stretch our hand to you today, friend. And God's got the last chapter in your life. And it's not how you start, it's how you finish, dear friend. And that dear friend that's at North right now, sitting in that chair and asking yourself, does that apply for me? Does that healing power of God apply for me? You betcha. God's going to send a waterfall of his Holy Spirit to flow through the church today. There ain't anything to do about it. There ain't a thing, ain't a dang thing he can do about it. God, we got serious business down here on earth. And we're at the hospital today right here at your, your house. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. Forgive us, Lord God, where we've had issues with other people. And we don't want our prayers to be hindered, Lord God. So we're laying the stuff down at the foot of the cross. And we're going to continue to talk about your healing hand. Lord, I can feel it. And Lord God, just the short 19 years that I've been serving you, I know when you're moving. And today's that day. Victory in the name of Jesus at this church. I said victory in the name of Jesus at this church. Hey, look out. Whoa, look out, look out, look out. Hey, he's a good God. And all God's people together said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.